it was a good good environment you know of course I want to be around my brothers because they older than me but they never peek on me I have my my brothers and uh, to more as a helpers and the kids that I need if I had like you they have over here the wrestling for kids I'm pretty sure I would be one of those kids was do doing wrestling school, you know. But my school, the the PE was just play play sports, you know, just for fun, you know, just, just uh, it was a playground. But yeah, I started doing capoeira. The first martial arts experience was capoeira. I was 11 years old, and I was really sucking capoeira. Uh, no coordination, you know, it was, it was it wasn't the sport for me. Just doing weights since I was 12 too. That's when I started doing a lot of weights follow my, my, my friends, but it's, weights was something that I, I used to, I, I like to do it. And uh, I was born just to go to the gym, Capoeira was fit on me, I said, you know what, I'm gonna look for Judo schools. And I started looking for Judo, when I, when I got in Judo, uh, the grappling, the ground game was, my, my instructor already said, you love this, you know. Uh, I was, I did Judo, it, it, I did Judo for the first year, and uh, after that, I was 17. When I was way 18, I started doing jujitsu and judo together. And uh, two years after I stopped judo, just I started just focusing on jujitsu. But because I hurt my knee, every single person, it's uh, they have a, they have two things. Even if they're not fighters, the things of protection. You know, they if they more explosive, more aggressive. They, they tend to like more striking, if they're more passive. Uh, I never studied this, it's just things come out of my mind. I think they really to do more grappling. My life changed completely, you know. I was 18 years old, really bad in school. Not, uh, nothing attracted me in the school, just the PE, because it was fun. Uh, I was, I said, what are you going to do? Are you going to do physical education school? Maybe I'm going to do this because my parents want. I didn't want to do it nothing at all. Once I start doing jiu-jitsu, I said, that's, what, that's something that I want to do in my life. I had the pressure for my family. Hey, you need to find out something to do it. But I was, it's crazy to looking back because I, I'm in, in Brazil, third world country. A guy with uh, middle middle level class, middle class level. I was a poor, I was this come from poverty, a lot of stories we have. You know, my parents give me a good, good school, uh, good education, good environment. They expect a lot from you too, of course, you know. But I want to do this for a living. And, and back then we didn't have any opportunity to, to make this happen. Uh, when, after a couple of years doing jiu-jitsu, uh, I was the old, my, my, my instructor, old student, because he start, I was the first guy to show up at his door to train with him. And I was already blue belt, people said, man, this guy's amazing, this guy's good, you know, yeah, I was kicking everyone's ass in the school, like, not because uh, I was the super, because I was training crazy, you know. Uh, I was third place in the roads, and as a brown belt, I was second place, and I won in a black belt. But it was a lot persistent. You know, a lot of guys from my generation, the guys came to me in the brown belt level, guys that I win, that, that I won, that I lost, they gave up when they got in the black belt. For me, it took it a lot out of me in terms of, uh, uh, I wasn't the most talented guy over there, but I was one of the most guys willing to do it. And in terms of training, give up things in life to just focus on the, the, the competition. But for sure, what, what is drove me is uh, I had the goal to have a school, to teach, but I would be sat satisfied with my myself right now for if I would compete. If I look in now, if you know what, you know, how many times that I have uh, injuries and people say, hey, man, just, you should just focus now and compete, you're a good instructor, you know, make a living. You just, uh, a competition take a, a, a lot out of you. you get, thanks God I didn't stop. You know? they, they brought me here in 96. And I did a seminar, and uh, I, I met a few friends, and uh, they still still with me. The guys back then, they, they, after they they had the seminar with me, they said, hey, you need to stay over here. And I stayed here for a few months. We all opened school in South Sac, but I went back to Brazil. I have a, a good offer to teach. But I wasn't happy because my, my girlfriend, 
back then, it's just my wife now, she was at home, she was in Brazil, no competition from me over here at all. I competed in sambo tournaments and some few tournaments, but nothing back then, no students, you know, people don't drive by to do class, man, what are you gonna do over here? I think my, my dream about teaching in the US is gonna die here right now. And I came back, but my brother still maintained the school. And he left in 98, he got married, he left in 98, but I kept the students base, the guys that was with me, I kept connection with them. They went to Brazil, I came here, I was came here like once a year during 96 to 2000, in 2001 or two, I came to a seminar and I met Covers, that was the huge karate schools around the area. And he asked me if you wanna teach, go back here teach. I said, I just come here if I, if I come with a visa because I'm married right now, I don't want to come without my wife, I come, I'm just gonna be here if it's legal. And it's crazy because it was right after the September 11, and we got a lawyer and he said, hey, I'm not gonna even attempt for you guys because I'm, we're not gonna get it, you know. They're not gonna give a visa for it, I'm sorry, but they're not gonna give a visa. One of my best students, a friend, Derek DeMano, he said, you know what, I'm still gonna try. By himself, he tried, he got the visa. And I moved over here in 2003. I worked two years for Covers, and uh, once I got my, my green card, I opened my own school. This is in 2006. When I won the Rhodes, I was 29 already. I had a four years, or three years, four years in the black belt that I didn't win. And I said, I moved over here. I was, uh, we, me and my wife was thinking about kids. Okay, once I get to this, I cannot be selfish. Athletes are the most selfish, especially as a fighter, they're very selfish. I need to take my teaching serious. I need to take my school serious because if I just think about me, my students are gonna give up. They're gonna stop, you know. And uh, I was like in that edge of uh, succeed or fail. It's crazy thing. The year that I moved over here, that's the year that I won the road. I was training with a blue, purple, max a pur couple of purple belts. And I, when I was the years before. I was in Brazil, with my hometown, training for a lot of black belts. And I was I was going to Rio for a month for camping, you know, training for months against the, uh, with the best guys, the Brazil top team. All the name you name it, Arona, Murilo Bustamante, Zé Maris Perry, all those guys. I was training with them to to win the the roads, and I lost. I was training guys and um, going to uh, to uh, stay in the corners. I felt was uh, completely. Pretty crazy, the whole environment about MMA, you know, because for me it's a fight. I, did, I, I never look as a tournament, there's a competition. For me it's not a competition, it's two guys in a fight, in a crowd, crave for blood. You know, I, I, I see, and I, I was in a mix of uh, feeling scare or, or no, you know, this is scare me or it's just it's not for me. You know, I said, well, this is scaring me or not for me? I said, no, if it's something too scary, you need to, to pass through. Especially if you make a leave in terms of uh, be around fighters and, uh, and the situation of competing. I said, you know what, I'm gonna train for this. I'm gonna give a shot, just as a challenge, a personal challenge. And the first time that he punched someone in the, fa in the face was in a professional level, in the, inside the cage. You know, and uh, that's when I punched someone the guy in the face. Until my 31 years old, for 31 years, I got in a fight, but I never punched away. I was a, bar, I was a, a bouncer here in, in Sacramento, in the, one of the, the craziest club. I never punched one guy in the face. Every fight that I got in the, in the park, I never, never. A broke fight that I'll have to punch someone in the face. I didn't want to give the decent for punch, but he didn't want to go to the ground with me. For nine minutes until the corner, I don't, know if, I don't remember if it was Uriah or my, my I think it was my jiu-jitsu instructor. Back my, one of my coaches, the ground coach, said, Cassio, you're gonna need to punch this guy in the face. I never forget what he said that. And uh, we went to a dirty box, I hold his neck, I threw a left hook, I'm a soft pot throw, left hook, he just go like this, I see his eyes going like this here. Said, what the hell? You know, start walking backward, I chase him, he ran, crossed through the cage, he bounced in the cage, I took it, <laughs> no, no, the beast is gonna come, wow, I start throwing wide punches, and he ducked under, he ran this way, and I look back, I chased him with crazy points like this, and he ducked under, he double-legged me. 
and the ground was like I said, it was a nine nine minutes and forty seconds. It took me no more than eight seconds to 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 finish him. Once he got the ground, he landed my guard. I shoot for the triangle. He try stack me, I roll him in the mount position, pull his head. He roll again, pull my lock the the triangle. But it was an awesome experience. Once I, once I I done, I look at oh man, this is not a fight. This is a competition. It took me this long to realize okay. The stress of fighting, you get stabbed, shot, is not what is there. It's a violent sport, it can be a violent sport, but it's not more violent than the football, it's not more violent than boxing, it's not more violent than Muay Thai. It's a, it's a, it's a, fight. It's a, it's a game, it's a game with a rules, with a point system, it's still a competition. That's what I realized with the competition. My wife got pregnant. And I have to run my own school, build my own school. It was a too much things to deal. I still fight one more time. And in 2006, I fought one more time that I won by armbar. I said, Cassio, now it's a career. It's not more like a fight once in a while that you want. And I felt, you know what? Family, school, that's something that I desire in the, in the beginning, you know, since young age. Fighting wasn't for me in that, in that time, you know. And uh, I don't regret, of course not, it was a great experience. Uh, I f what, it, what, it, what, is a good, what is a good person, mm -hmm. you know? It's not a, the religion gonna tell what is good for you. You know, it's so easy to be a good person, you know? But w what is make you a good person is a, what is surround you, your life and your stories. And, uh, and uh, I, I cannot be a bad person because Everything is offered for me. Everything that is, the people that are around, the people that believe me, is make me a good person. And the desire to make this a career, desire to have the same girl is with me. It's uh, when I was uh, 15 years old, the same one I have right now. And we've been together 25 years. I could have give up on her. She could have give up me easy, you know. You know, we were in the, our, our, our prime in Brazil, you know, surrounded by beautiful girls. She's, she's beautiful, she's surrounded by a bunch of guys. You know, we couldn't give up each other, but we stuck together, you know, for 25 years. Never broke up, never had a falling out. You know, she believed in me, the most important, one of the, 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 the year that, that I decided to move over here, she said, no, I'm going with you. If it feels like it's gonna be good for you, for good for, for us, Let's do it. And she was have a, a solid career over there. She gave up to be around me. It, you know, for sure, with three kids, to be an incredible mom. I can be a better parent, but a better father. But I'm with them, not 24-7, but most of the day. And uh, I love them. I give much love as possible. You know, I, help, I tell them all the time that how much I love, how much appreciation I have for my my parents right now, how much appreciate I put my wife in this pedestal because she's deserved, you know, but it's combined, again, combined with the story of uh, a good story. Thank, thanks God, you know, thanks whoever is upstairs, you know.